Redo of Healer is by far the most fucked up anime I have ever reviewed. In fact, this anime is so cursed, it's only second to the most cursed anime of all time, Made in Abyss, which I will do a review later on. However, this video is about Redo of Healer. So, Redo of Healer is an anime about a twink healer, Kairu, who was mistreated and then raped by the heroes of the kingdom. I should say quotation mark heroes, because they are not actually heroes, in fact, they're just royalty dickheads. They take him for granted because he has the tendency to try and seek out freedom. So what they do is what any rational person would do is get him addicted to hard luxor, which is drugs in this universe, and imprison him, letting people do whatever they want to a slim twink body figure while he's in the prison. Now, one day at his village, he wanders into the forest and he discovers a magical spiritual lake. The spirits give him the sight of the spirit so he can see everything. Apparently this also means whenever he heals someone, he can also get their experience and powers. So when the power is active, his right eye turns a radioactive looking green. Not long after, in battle, he absorbs something called the Philosopher's Stone, which apparently gives you the power of a god. He was supposed to heal the first princess, Princess Flare. Instead, however, he absorbs a stone, and then he goes back to him at the lake saying, so that's how it would play out. In episode 2, Karu gets revenge. Coming into this episode, I was very unprepared. After seeing the first episode, I let my guard down. I had thought this was overhyped by people. However, in reality, episode 2 was very, very dark. Karu gets his revenge on the first princess. He does it in one of the most fucked up ways I've seen in an anime. He disguises himself as the head of the royal guard, then uses his magic to brutally rape her. Now, this is where I'm stuck mentally. After watching this episode, I took a break. I didn't know what to think. Is this moral? I mean, he got revenge on his rapist. Is he righteous or wrong? Is it okay to rape your rapist? I mean, he did do more than just rape her. He also murdered a few guards, but who really gives a fuck about that? This caused trouble to go on in my mind, with the conflictions of which side is morally right. I had seeked out spiritual guidance. It's in times like these I must turn to the oldest manga of guidance, the Tanakh. So, where in this book does it say anything about rape? Uh, nowhere. Nowhere that gives me advice for this, at least. So then again, I turn to another light novel of guidance, the knockoff which got more popular somehow, the Holy Bible. Now, here I get somewhat of an answer, or at least according to Christians, it would be an answer. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. This means Kairu is morally righteous and that all of this is perfectly fine. However, it's important to remember that the majority of supposed Christians haven't actually read the Bible, so it's very important to have an extraordinarily vague interpretation of it that's just some sort of neo-hippie shit. I mean, if a Christian can support gay marriage and radical left ideology, then clearly I can use the Bible to support my fringe theory. You know what that means? Anyways, Kairu in his anime about revenge rape is morally correct because it's an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That's right, I have the fucking Catholic Church on my side. I have tens of millions of middle-aged Karens on my side. Try and fucking stop me from saying this. No one can- There's a bit more to this anime. Like, Kairu forms a haram with a wolf girl who had her village destroyed by the kingdom and then was sold into slavery, which he then bought to kind of free. But... This is something I don't really want to focus on. I've already talked about enough about the basic plot. Now let me get into the actual review segment of this video. Now, what do I think about this anime? I mean, after all, this is my review of it. Now, I'm gonna give a short answer. I would say it's Kino. I rate this anime a grade A-. minus. However, this is very oversimplified. Let me start out by saying, never in my whole professional anime connoisseur career have I come across such a vile, such an intriguing anime. It has vulgarity and the moral questioning of gushing over magic girls, but it has a plot line that nearly works perfectly with each character. The plot was simple and at least potential and room for several extra seasons, if they ever get around to it, which I know fucking well they won't. The ending leaves a big question open. What happens to the kingdom? Where do they go? We know the king doesn't die, but most of the royalty dies. So what really happens? My personal bet is that the kingdom falls apart because of instability. The peasantry after seeing a king's failure, not only to expand but to maintain order, would have major ripple down effects. Usually in history, when a king doesn't abdicate like this, his power will largely be diminished, and his trust from the public will be very damaged. I feel this anime is overlooked as a revenge rape anime. 
when in reality it's only two scenes per episode of hentai. Yeah, you shouldn't be aiming for that. This show struggles to find its core audience, I believe. However, I know one group of people who would love this anime, and that community is known as 4chan.org. Now, what is 4chan.org, you might ask? 4chan.org is a very overhated social media platform that the news makes out to be some sort of weird polarized group of terroristic Elliot Rogers and hackers. But in reality, 4chan is a lot more than the political radicals of slash poll slash or the incels of R9K slash. 4chan would be the core audience because of the incels. To be more precise, I would say Robot9001 is a target board. Anyways, sorry I was gone for a week. I was researching what cursed anime to do next. See you in the next video, Cursed Anime Review 15, Hillbilly Elegy by J.D. Vance, the future Vice President of the United States of America. I know, great manga artist.